just a couple of months ago, Google's already come out with the sequel, Nano Banana 2 also known as Nano Banana Pro. They've done this as part of their new Gemini 3 release right after OpenAI released their own ChatGPT updates, completely blowing them out of the water. The new Nano Banana model does everything the old one can, but not only better, it also unlocks things that we couldn't do with the older model. On top of that, the new Nano Banana has built into it all of the world knowledge that the new Gemini 3 has, giving it an unprecedented level of knowledge and data interpretation, opening up incredibly new avenues of image creation that we couldn't do with any other model before. So today, we're going to look at a few use cases that we can do with the new Nano Banana Pro and see how it's going to completely revolutionize image creation and editing. So without further ado, let's dive right in. So as usual, I've got Nano Banana ready and up and running over on KaijuGen. So we're going to go and look at some of the cool things that you can do. You can see I've got a few examples thrown out over here. Now, right off the bat, some of the absolutely impressively amazing things that Nano Banana can do is the massive improvements to resolution. Anna Banana can create images from 1000 pixels all the way up to 4 megapixels. This already gives an unprecedented level of image quality and detail, fixing a problem that other AI models have had for ages, which is the generation of fine details. With so many more megapixels available, Nano Banana is able to go in and create smaller details without running into artifacting. We can see that here with the first image. This is going to be one of the YouTube posters, so if you didn't see this one, this is one of them. And this was created entirely with Nano Banana. And you can see here, it's a 4K image, and the level of detail is insane. Everything is crisp. If we look over here in the background, there's small details that are incredibly well drawn. And generally, there's not anything that stands out in terms of artifacting that is weirdness from trying to draw small details. Now, the other thing you might notice here with Nanobanana, which I'm going to dive into now, is the incredible textual fidelity. Nano Banana is amazing at generating text, not just in posters, as you can see here, but even in the creation of infographics and posters. And you can see here, I told it to create a infographic for me on itself, Nano Banana. Of course, it looks like Gemini is not self-aware of its own model, but still, this is really cool and interesting. We can see here in Nano Banana Pro, the future of compact nutrition. Sure. The thing you'll notice, though, is although it's a bunch of made up stuff, it's cohesive and it makes sense. Nowhere can I see a single line of text that is gibberish, messed up, or nonsensical. If we look over here at this nano banana capsule context, it's created the idea of this being a capsule technology. We've got here the banana with the molecules. It's talking about how it's a precision delivery system for rapid absorption, bypassing digestive degradation. And then it talks about here about nutrient nanoparticles. So everything in this little block here is contextual to this item number one coming from the banana capsule. Then we jump over here where it talks about the pro level energy matrix and how we've got this release complex over here. It gives an alertness boost, optimized blend for cognitive focus and physical endurance, avoiding the crash. So far, everything makes sense. We've gone from one to two, no weirdness. There's contextual awareness. We now go back to the digestive component, which was mentioned over here. And then finally, we see it here talked about a convenience form factor. And we got it here in these pill and envelopes with this little pill box here, water soluble, pocket size, perfect for on the go lifestyles, no peel, no mess. So it even understands that this is a banana product and that the peel of a banana might be annoying and messy. So it's created a all-in-one infographic for something totally made up. It looks awesome. And then it's even got a disclaimer down here. Conceptual product illustration, not a real medical or dietary product based on futuristic nanonutrition concepts. So its own knowledge of nanonutrition concepts in Gemini and created what it thinks is a nutrition poster. And it's even been intelligent enough to add a disclaimer. This is mind blowing. So let's take this level of information and image context awareness to another level. Something that the previous Nano Banana couldn't do, or any image editing model for that matter, is create charts and infographics where it's aware of what are the elements in the image. So creating things like charts, for example, would have been a problem. Well, not anymore. You can see here that I told it to create image chart of bananas with the leftmost chart or the leftmost column showing 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100, and illustrating it in the form of bananas. And you can see here, it understood it perfectly. It's put the correct columns in the correct place with the correct height. This is 25%, 50, 70, 100. This is 25% of this column. And it's even been intelligent enough to put here a X and Y axis all on its own. I didn't have to tell it to do that. So it has a full understanding of the context of the image. 
and it just continues to get better. I told it to illustrate a solar system door for a kid's poster for my son, and this is what it came up with. It's cute, it's friendly, and it makes sense. It's understood that here's the Earth, right? And we would take a tour route, you know, starting from Earth, we'd go to the moon first, and then we'd have to come back to Earth, and from Earth we could go to Venus, Mercury, and the Sun, or go to Mars, Jupiter, Uranus, or from Jupiter to Saturn. It's not perfect, there's a few issues here, but it's got a general understanding of the solar system, of what the journey would look like. It's got the style, right, for a kid's poster, and again, all the text is perfect. It all makes sense. Mercury, the fast little guy, Venus, super hot and cloudy, Earth, our home, Moon, Earth's buddy, the tour route. This just opens up so many possibilities for education, tourism posters, social media, and so on. Now, another cool thing that has happened with the new Nano Banana release is Google's unlocked a little bit more the IP restriction. Again, opens up so many possibilities, especially when you're playing around with things that are pop culture related. It gives us so many options in terms of how we can prompt the model and get information out of it. So taking advantage of the poster creation capabilities of the model, I told it to create a alphabet chart based on Pokemon. Now, it did a pretty good job, but there's a few issues here, starting with, for example, using Pikachu for A. And then there's a few Pokemon here, which I think don't exist. You know, you've got J and you've got this Kanoa, which I don't think exists, or this Machion for I. So there's a lot of issues here. You know, K, they put a Squirtle here and then they put Monton. So it's 75% of the way there. This is where we start to run into issues where you've got some text garbling, where we've got the War Turtle here and it's put this whatever. However, I created this and then I edited the poster by coming over here and switching to the edit mode, grabbing the link, popping it in here, right? And then simply telling it that this is supposed to be a Pokemon themed alphabet chart. Some of the Pokemon don't match with their letters, fix it. And it did it. It changed the Pikachu up here for an Arbok, that's correct. We've got a B for Bulbasaur, C for Charmander, D for Ditto, E for Eevee, F for Flareon, that wasn't there earlier, L for Lapras, K for Coughing, that wasn't there earlier. It fixed the text down here for the War Turtle. So even though the first image wasn't great, on the second attempt on an edit, it fixed it. And the amazing things this model can do just don't stop getting better. Over here, we've got infographic for learning a basic salsa step, and it looks correct to me on one timing. So depending on the version of salsa that you're doing, there is one timing on two timing, and it's got the steps over here. Here is an infographic on how to make an Indian chai, complete with little details in the font that just give it that kind of touch. And this is what I was talking about, you know, with being able to go 1K, 2K, these are 2K images, by the way, where it's putting in these little details without artifacting if we zoom in you can see here that there's enough detail where it's kind of got the squiggles and the dots here without artifacting and it's only able to do this because we've got that higher resolution i even fed in a picture of a product this is fruit puree company that i work with and i just gave it a picture of the product which you can kind of see over here from a original nano banana edit and i just told it make a merchandising kit for me out of this right super simple prompt and this is what it came up with it's entirely theme appropriate it's on context it looks amazing i'm going to recommend to actually have these made because it looks amazing and that's all with that gemini 3 knowledge now another really cool thing that it can do is i took this reference image, I took my character and I told it to recreate it in the same art style. That's something that we could do before with the original Gemini. I personally think the quality output here is so much better. But a cool thing that we can then do is we can annotate that image and tell Nano Banana, hey, annotate this with the movement I want or the camera movement, make this movement, have the character move this way, and it will annotate it with the arrows. You can then further edit it and tweak it like we did with the Pokemon poster. And then you can then feed that into VO 3.1 and it will follow through along with it. So I've got it here with image to video. And we can see here that we are saying the gun follows the target, camera pans a slow left with the arrow showing the space area. And then we've kind of got an arrow here with things needing to move. And if we press play, right, we can see here that the gun follows the target, it does a pretty good job of that. And then like the arrow, the camera pans showing the movement of the space behind it. So it did a pretty good job following through with those prompts. So this opens up incredible abilities for filmmaking, not just with putting instructions on an image for it to follow, but also with that that Gemini 3.1 knowledge, we can prompt it with things to actually give us the frame by frame update. So I told it to just update this eight seconds in the future 
And I didn't even specify what the character should be given. I asked the model to figure it out. I said, what is the character doing in the movement? And we can see here, eight seconds in the future. You know, at the beginning, she was pointing the gun. There was a battle going on in the background in space. And here she's kind of put it down. There's a little detailing here gone. And what we can do is we can now jump over into video mode, head on down to the Google section and grab the VO 3.1 fast first frame to last frame. We can set this over here as our first frame, grab this image as our last frame. We just want to check that they're both there. We'll just put a simple prompt or you could just leave it blank. Since this is supposed to be eight seconds into the future, let's go ahead and set it to eight. Keep it at 720, no audio, and let's go ahead and generate. And we've got the result over here. So again, we've got that space battle. She's shooting out over here, shoots a few more times, puts the gun down. And this is a cool little, little touch here. She looks at the camera, right? And then looks forward. And again, cool little details here. This has more to do with VO 3.1, but you know, it's all Google. I like here targets eliminated coming up on the screen. That contextual awareness, I just love it. This could be like a training simulator or something. So very cool over there. Another example of the insane editing with Nano Banana Pro. I told it again to take the same image, make a YouTube thumbnail out of it. I thought it was really good. This is the 4K version, extremely detailed, but I found the text to be a little small and I figured it should include a banana. So I told it all of those things. So that's just some of the amazing things that you can do with Google's Nano Banana Pro. If you've got other ideas or other use cases on what you can do with this amazing model, please do put it down in the comment section below. And if you'd like me to do any particular kind of exploration or study on different use cases for Nano Banana, do put that down below as well. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please do like and subscribe and do consider supporting me on Patreon or checking out Kaijugen as it's my own image and video generation platform. Using it supports me directly and it's relatively restriction free. As long as you're not doing anything illegal, the only restrictions are those imposed by the model themselves. Please do consider checking it out. And if you've got any ideas, any improvements, anything that you'd like to see me do better or improve on the platform, please use the help and report section down here. I do check it every week or so, and I try and update the platform as quickly as I can with your updates. I also respond to emails directly. So again, any issues, problems, go ahead and message me there and I will sort you out. Thanks so much. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.